Hello, welcome to the Deco Minimalist. My name is Carrie. I talk about vintage style, 1930s fashion, and glamour on a budget. And I mentioned in my last video that the um, development of catalogs um, helped to change the way people shopped in the 1930s, not just for clothing, but also for homewares, pretty much anything that you could buy. Um, there was a shift from people buying in store or making themselves to people um, having more access to ready to wear through uh, paper catalogs, as well as paper patterns as well. And I recently bought a true real vintage catalog from 1938. And I thought we would take a look at that today, both as a, as like a primary source, um, both as a sort of archival exercise, but also looking at this catalog for some style inspiration. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the catalog um, that I bought on eBay. The listing said it was for uh, from 1938, but the some of the details on inside the catalogs um, said that it's from August of 1937. Either way, roughly you know mid to late 30s. And uh, let's take a look, see what we got. I really love this first uh, insert um, with the three dresses on the left. I particularly love the black dress on the right, just very chic, very put together. Yeah, all here for it. And then we have the table of contents uh, saying, you know, what's gonna be on the catalog, obviously. And then on this spread, I found this spread really interesting if you see here on the upper left, I'll be putting images on the screen as well. We have an advert here um, for like a, a mail order course, it seems, from the Women's Institute to uh, teach, quote, teach you how to make beautiful, stylish clothes easily and in your spare time at home. You'll learn how to cut, fit, style, and design dresses just like a professional dressmaker does. In no time at all, you'll be making lovely costumes for your friends, neighbors, at a nice profit for you. So this was essentially a, I believe it was a mail order course um, from the Women's Institute in uh, Scranton, Pennsylvania, from the bottom, it says, uh, to sort of teach you how to run your own business, essentially. A, teach you the skills to make clothes, but then also from that being able to um, charge for it. <laughs> to run your own uh, dressmaking little side hustle uh, out of your own home. And then at the bottom here, you'll see these check marks of um, whoever was reading this could and was interested could indicate what they specifically wanted to, what their goals were basically. So to make clothes for themselves, to become a professional, um, to learn advanced dressmaking designs, and uh, even millinery, it looks like. So yeah, you could mail that away, and then presumably, I think, get your course books, uh, your correspondence in the mail. And this caught my attention because I have a video coming out next in a couple weeks about um, where I mention this book that talks about this kind of phenomena of um, organizations, both sort of like the Women's Institute, but also um, home economics departments in universities that were teaching women and girls how to dress themselves and how to often make a living from uh, dressmaking and, and fashion. So more on that to come. On this page we have, or on the next page, we have different accessories to uh, spice up your look, including wearing the wearing of different flowers, which I thought was interesting. And on this page is more about um, the different hat styles that are coming into vogue, as well as the hairstyles to go with the hats, because the two often uh, developed sort of to complement the other almost. And then at, on the, this last paragraph here at the bottom talks about the different shoes and shoe shapes that are coming in to style and specifically shouts out uh, the Duchess of Windsor, AKA uh, Wallace Simpson or formerly Wallace Simpson, who was quite a fashion and style icon of the thirties. So I thought that was uh, quite interesting to have her explicitly mentioned. And then on the right here, I just love these, both of these dresses. Black uh, is outstanding and so are these outfits. 
um, just, yeah, very chic, very um, 1930s city woman kind of thing. This is sort of the style that I, in my dreams, you know, aspire to. And I can't quite tell where they're supposed to be, but it, the vibe kind of gives me either maybe like an herb, like, you know, a cruise or something, or maybe like a, a dinner in the, like a late afternoon, early evening dinner at like a New York City, in like the New York City theater district or something. I don't know. That's kind of the vibe that I get. Or maybe a business lunch. Yeah. So many options. And I love to, at the bottom, they have this little illustration of what the dresses are supposed to look like uh, from the from the back. So, ah, good stuff, good stuff. And then we have um, outfits for college women, women who were in college, which I think would have been quite unusual at the time. Um, yeah, so very specific demographic, but still, you need to uh, dress appropriately for it. So. And yeah, just a lot of tweed, I think, you know, on the campus screen, sort of a, I don't know, quintessential image of college. And again, more beautiful colored illustrations. And I love, again, this dark brown coat with the fur collar. I'm sensing a theme in myself. And we have a really pretty, col uh, um, really pretty, pretty camel sort of wrap dress almost with the puff sleeves. These all seem to be sort of wardrobe basics um, that would are, you know, good to have. So a great coat, a very nice sort of dinner or like, you know, dress, maybe a dinner dress, just a simple basic kind of frock. On the right, you have like a nice green dress to wear for the office. And then I, one of my favorite dresses here is this either brown print or dark red print house dress with the the detailing and then the buttons on the back, just really, really cute. I need to make, um, I have some green print fabric that I need to make into a, a house dress and this is giving me my motivation, which is always good. We have more uh, fancy evening dress. I don't have too much to say about this. It's not necessarily my cup of tea in the styles here, but you can see what is interesting is you can see the shapes of the skirts in particular are starting to become a little less bias and leaning more into the sort of fuller skirts that I associate at least with more of like a 1940s silhouette. I have more probably just classic basics and undergarments here. Yeah, all good stuff. I wish someone would bring back tap pants. <sighs> Please, and not in polyester. <laughs> And yes, we have uh, wedding dresses. And again, kind of continuing, because we're in the late 30s, some of the style and shapes here are what I think of more like almost 1940s, like the more triangular neckline and the more triangular sort of peaked waist detailing. But yeah, all very beautiful. Definitely here for that. And then I love this colored um, drawing here on the right, just the three women in different outerwear options, the teal kind of suiting separate is very lovely. Again, for inspiration, we have the use of um, sort of color contrasting, but making it kind of cohesive with the orange red hat band, gloves, bag and shoes. And then we see the woman next to her replicating this also with the matching red hat, red scarf, red and red gloves which one of which has fallen <laughs> on the floor there. Um, you can see the dog is sort of sniffing it. And I love that dog detail. It's totally unnecessary, but there, and that's kind of cool. And the woman, the woman next to her, the one on the right, also has a sort of contrasting glove combination with the, um, with the scarf. And I can't tell from the perspective of the drawings if, but they may, the two on the right, maybe in like a lower heel or flat kind of Oxford sports shoe, which is, which is nice. We have uh, styles for juniors, so probably, you know, teenager to maybe through college. I would wear all of these when I was in college. I definitely would have wanted to wear all of these, just beautiful styling details and bright colors. Again, you have the use of contrasting accessories uh, to create, you know, an interesting look. 
And again, on this page on the left here, you have contrasting accessories. I like in particular the yellow gloves with the yellow scarf. Just the color combinations are so creative. Um, yeah, and then on the left here, one of my favorite dresses in this whole catalog is the one on the bottom left with the curved waist and the puffy sleeves. Just so pretty, and it's giving me the urge to take some of my cotton sateen fabric and begin uh, making some uh, nice work dresses for summer, which I definitely need. So good style inspo and sewing inspo as well. And then we have some um, tips on sewing from the, the editor of this issue, who is from Kansas State University, probably in the home economics department. All of these dresses are beautiful. That's kind of all I have to say about it. Just sort of very stunning and very feminine, as the uh, headline suggests. And oh my god, <laughs> velvet is formal, and velvet is uh, a great fabric choice for these outfits. I love this color uh, drawing on the left here, especially the, oh my god, the burgundy velvet dress here with the ruching, and then it has this really interesting kind of button detail on the top, like on the on the bodice. I can't tell, you know, if the button detailing would have been functional or if it was purely decorative, but oh my god, can you imagine all of the ruching and in velvet, in burgundy velvet, just, ah, uh, it's so good, it's so good. Oh man, I'm like itching to have a velvet dress of my own. Maybe someday, maybe next year, we shall see. And as I said, I'm a sucker for outerwear, and I love every outfit on this page. Like, the shapes, the cuts, I love this um, sort of jacket here in the, the, the center right. It could be, it, it looks almost to me like a, like a Persian, like, lamb's wool or whatever, the, the Persian kind of textured fur. Um, just really elegant. I love, I think, like, the waist, the jacket's hitting right at the at the top of the hip is really flattering. Just so good. And then on the right page here, by the way, the woman in the right, in the, in, in the right, in the center grouping looks almost like she's wearing a knockoff of the Chaparelli hat. It could just be, like, the angle or whatever, but that's what it looks like to me, which is kind of funny. And I love the black coat next to her, like the woman in the black coat with the fur collar and the slightly A-lined you know, coat is just so lovely. And then you have this fabulous uh, outfit here in the, in the foreground with the like a coat or like a cape thing with the fur and then probably the, you know, matching suit jacket and skirt or suit in or dress and jacket, just so good, so good. And then we have uh, knitwear and children's wear, which I'm not super interested in, to be honest with you. But one of the things that I did think was interesting, just sort of skimming through these pages, was the way that the authors of the publication talk about children's wear, and they were framing it in a way where it was like, you know, um, giving or like buying or making this you know, pea coat for your child, it will give, like, will give them, like, a sense of place in the world, and using sort of the framing of, like, cl clothing for children as a way to, like, also an, an educational tool, and as a way to sort of impart sort of the, the social values, you know, of the, of the grown-ups or whatever, so I thought, really, of the society, so I thought that was kind of cool, and, you know, clothing as a way to give confidence and sort of purpose and that kind of thing. So interesting in, in the context of children's clothing as well. And then we have just a bunch of beautiful dresses, all of which I would wear in a heartbeat. So, you know, oh, and I missed a page. So here is more children's clothing. And then we have uh, dresses for high school graduation, I think in particular, which probably would have been a big accomplishment. So worthy of celebration. I mean, it still is a big, big accomplishment, but in the 30s, probably even more so. And then we have dresses for older women. I don't know what would be considered old or, you know, middle-aged or whatever. 
1937, 1938, but, you know, I would wear most of them, so, yeah. <laughs> and then we have um, style designs and dress designs for women who were more petite. Um, I think mostly the idea was to use sort of vertical detailing and vertical shapes to draw the eye upward. This page I thought was really interesting. It's um, because of the focus on mending and ways to sort of reinvigorate clothes you already had, especially in like the center fold here. The use of um, re the, the remaking of sleeves to create a different look. And then also on the left, I love this black outfit here that's in the center. Um, the, detail, the text is more about the use of the turban to create a new look for this dress, but the dress design itself is really, really beautiful. And then on the right here, it took me like three, I had perused this magazine like three times before I realized that the outfits on the right page are uh, maternity wear. <laughs> so um, that's interesting. Uh, mostly I just have questions about like how, how. Okay, so the, the text on this page says that, you know, um, it points out that, for example, the figure, um, the outfit on the far left here, it has like a boxy jacket, which is useful for concealing, you know, changing body. And then the center dress is a wrap style. So good for, again, I don't know, <laughs> the body changes. And then um, the, the neckline detail, the jab, jabot, jabot design again creates fullness which disguises you know again body changes and then the dress on the left here the black dress on the left has i think it says an ex like an, an expandable waist so presumably there's some type of elastic or whatever in the waistline but my main thought is like did these actually work like is it possible to be i mean i don't know if they worked at like you know nine months pregnant but i, I just want to know like how comfortable were these? How practical were these? I just have so many questions. Just, yeah, just, 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 just questions. Just, yeah. And then at the back here, we have the more details for different dress designs. And lastly, this really beautiful mushroom brown colored ensemble. And yeah, that is the catalog in all its glory. That's it for this video. If you found it valuable, uh, please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, do all of the things that you're supposed to do on YouTube, and this way you can be notified when I upload a video every other Monday. Bye! I feel like I'm channeling a little Norma Shear, but on a slightly bad hair day. What can you do?